this next handout, it simply says introduction at the top of it. This I alluded to in one of the classes last year, I can't remember which. Uh, this is a, a part of uh, the introduction written by Dr. Andre Sain of the Canadian Academy of Homeopathy, who is my mentor. And he is writing a book of several thousand pages called The Weight of Evidence. And he basically is going through the history of the use of homeopathy. And he's gathering data and research that's been, that's hiding in libraries all over the world. It's been, a lot of it has been suppressed. It's been very difficult to get. But as he pulls it out, and he, every year the, the, the text grows by another several thousand pages. So we don't know how long this is going to be, but it will be, It'll live up to its title, Weight of Evidence, because um, it's going to be a weighty book. But he compare, he goes in and looks at um, all of the major epidemics in the over the course of human history: scarlet fever, fever, measles, mumps, rubella, um, all of these infectious diseases, and looks at the actual results that were obtained by 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 well-trained, um, effective practicing homeopaths at the time, and what he's found is not only are the results as good if not better when compared to today's standards of treating it with conventional medicine and antibiotics, but um, what makes it so scientific is the fact that across the board from one country to one town to disease, from disease to country to town, no matter what, the results, are, there's a consistency in the results that we're obtained. So it's not just it's, 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 it's across all human disease is basically what it's looking at. So I'm just going to read you the uh, first and last paragraph of this Google paper, but it's really, I think you find it interesting. Homeopathic physicians are often accused by their allopathic friends of only prescribing single cases of, only presenting single cases of cure. In other words, like anecdotal evidence. To the contrary, this review will present large groups of people affected during times of epidemic. Even though homeopathy makes a specialty of emphasizing the individual individuality of the individually the individuality of each patient affected with acute or chronic disease, its literature is full of statistics documenting its clinical efficacy on large populations in times of epidemics. When reviewing this literature, it is truly astonishing to note, as many other reviewers have noted before, that there is not a single report showing the superiority of allopathy over genuine or classical or pure homeopathy and this at any given period of time. Genuine homeopathy refers to the practice according to its well-defined principles and rules of practice. And uh, the very, just the last paragraph of this, uh, he goes on to say, the review is also the story of how ironic our healthcare system, like many other institutions in our societies, such as our political and justice systems, and is controlled by self-serving interests instead of benefiting the common good, as it was originally ideally meant to be. This review is also the story of the struggle of, struggle of the pioneers of homeopathy, experienced not in spite of, but because of their success. With overwhelming numbers in hand, let's relive some events related to one of the most exciting and certainly most underestimated and prejudiced scientific discoveries of all time, homeopathy. So it's good. Uh, it's a good little introduction, and the book is going to be pretty incredible. Uh, the next handout is something that you should make a bunch of Xerox copies of. It lists. It's a listing of um, some of the most common homeopathic remedies that are abbreviated. And you'll see that in the books, you'll see what the abbreviations are and what they refer to. Basically, um, the way you use this is this is the way you're going to figure out what remedy would be indicated in a given case, if it's sort of more complicated than a few symptoms that you can keep track of in your head. So basically, if under symptom, under number one, you write down um, sore throat worse in the morning, and then the next symptom could be sore throat worse from talking, and the next one could be sore throat worse um, or better with warm drinks. And then the next one could be um, generally worse at four in the afternoon. And the next one could be craving sweets. And the next one is not thirsty or thirsty for large quantities of large water. And so different remedies will have those symptoms if you look them up in the repertory of symptoms. 
And so you just put a check if that symptom has it. And when you're done, you'll get, you'll see which remedies, the one remedy that had all of those symptoms is the remedy you want to prescribe. So this is a more detailed way of prescribing. I have a computer program that does it for me. Um, but you don't just pick the remedy that, that the computer or this chart tells you. You still have to go back and read about the remedy and make sure it fits the overall um, characteristics of the patient that you're treating. So in order to use this, you'll actually need a repertory, which I'm not even sure. Has anyone been using these books? I'm not even positive if these have repertories in them. But those are that's a separate book that has a list of all the symptoms. And we'll talk more about how to use a repertory. Um, it's a more advanced way, a more precise way of prescribing. But for now, um, know that it exists. And if you're so motivated, you could certainly go out and get one. Um, but in the meantime, those reference books will is a, is a good place to start. Okay. This is um, propaganda that you can grab as many of them as you would like and distribute them as far and wide as you are motivated to do. Um, it'd be, I'd appreciate it. And because it'd be nice to keep this group going, and you know, sometimes it starts out a little bigger and it can kind of wane. And so, depending on interest, hopefully we have enough people. I know there were a lot of people who were planning on coming today, so we may have a, a bigger crowd uh, next month. But we'll see. And then these are the brochures on the class, so you can you can hand these out to people that you know, or you know, spread the help spread the word. All right. Um, so the future dates. I I publicized this group is meeting the second Tuesday of every month, which we will do, except for December. In December, it's going to be the first Tuesday. So the dates are going to be um, October 12th and November 9th, and then December 7th. So the second Tuesday of every month here at 7.30 in the office, um, December 1 will be the first Tuesday. What I'd like you to do for um, the next class, aside from trying to do your cases and aside from watching all the videos, is if you are acutely ill yourself or you know someone that is, um, bring that person to class and it would be great to do, and I'll try to do the same with my own patients, it would be great to do some live cases where we can actually have someone who's actually got something going on and we can take go through the process of actually asking the questions, taking the case, analyzing the case, and figuring out what, which remedy we need, to, uh, we need to give. So, and for anyone to be treated, um, there is, uh, there's no charge for me to treat them. Um, we can treat them here, they just have to be willing to be uh, videotaped and um, played on YouTube. <laughs> When you said uh, some of the developmental uh, uh, issues with children, uh -huh. what were you, were you talking about ADHD, dyslexia, that kind of thing? Was all those more things. Severe? Yeah, all those things and even more severe. I have uh, I have some kids who had a brain injury at, at birth and were on feeding tubes to start or were not walking or talking as they should. And so, um, so all spectrum of cerebral yeah. palsy too. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's an area where there can be, of course, there is limitation. Obviously, I wouldn't profess to cure every case of cerebral palsy, but um, these kids oftentimes get get much better. So. Um, all right. Another little announcement is um, the National Center for Homeopathy is a good resource for you guys, and um, their website is homeopathic.org. You can go to their website, you can join. Our study group is, is uh, falls under their sort of jurisdiction. This is, um, that we're listed with their organizations. We, we are actually part of the National Center for Homeopathy. If you join, you get a magazine. Homeopathy Today, which I'll leave up here, you guys can check out. Um, it goes through topics and of uh, homeopathy, how to treat. It gives you uh, cases, interesting case studies, and things. So you can. It's a good. It's a good resource, and you're supporting uh, the profession that way. Um, what else? Oh, just a little side note on um, cell phones and 
homeopathic remedies. Cell phone radiation will destroy homeopathic remedies. So you want to keep your remedies at least a foot away from your cell phone. Um, every single phone call your phone receives will damage it to some degree. Once it's received about five to ten calls in a proximity of a remedy, the remedy is, is essentially destroyed. So try to keep that separate. How far do you have to take it away? At least one foot, 12 inches. And we'll also, that's another topic that we'll go over, it's not homeopathy specifically, but we'll talk about um, at some point cell phone radiation and how to protect against it and there's certain devices on the market that are um, good and certain ones that are bogus and okay. I'm testing some of those things out and so I'll, um, um, I'll give you a report at some point over the next few months. Uh, any questions at this point? Okay, so I think time's about up, so I think this is a good point to break. And uh, give me those sheets that you did on your questions, and we'll try to get all those answers and meet all of your expectations, and um, hopefully have a good time doing it. All right, thanks for coming. We'll see you next month. Thank you.